Hello, welcome back to the veg plot of the farmyard garden. My name is Claire. Went to the local nurseries yesterday to get some starts for the hanging baskets and I saw these summer purple sprouting broccoli. Now I haven't sown any purple sprouting broccoli for this year but I couldn't resist them. 12 plants for two pounds. It's almost not worth sowing your own seeds at that price, is it? So I'll just get these on the table in the polytunnel and then I'll give you a look around. Oh, where's the table gone? Um, my little school desk has disappeared. Or has it? Rather impulsively this morning, I moved the desk. I was sort of thinking to myself, imagining this picture of the polytunnel doors flung open and seeing all of the summer crops in all of their glory. And then it occurred to me that that desk would actually be obscuring the view in the middle bed. When we put the polytunnel in, I had no intention of having any type of desk or staging or whatever in here because I had the greenhouses. But it quickly became apparent that as soon as I walked over here, I wanted to put something down, be it my phone, be it tools, seedlings, and I didn't just want to chop them on the floor. And that's where the school desk came into it because it was sort of in the back of one of our farm sheds. And I thought, will it fit the end of the bed? Which it did, but I don't think that's a long-term solution for it. So this morning I came up with a plan. I decided to take this bed back and put the little desk here, completely out of the way just put these down there now and I'm really pleased with it here I think it just makes perfect sense and it just feels like the space has opened up loads more so whilst I'm in the polytunnel I might as well show you what's on the floating shelf some of these things are going to get planted out today obviously not the sweet corn which is just starting to germinate I have archerito and Montreal lettuce here there's something very tactile about stroking the top of the lettuces but I do need to get them pricked out and potted on. Tender stem broccoli that I'm doing in the challenge with Eli and Kate. I've got some red kale, got some cabbage here. This is calabos, kaolettes, some beetroot that needs to get planted out today. Some of the sweet peas, not had absolutely brilliant germination, but I think there's enough sweet peas there. These onions are on the menu to be planted out today. Pink panther and rumba which is a white onion and then these are the original sweet peas that are sowed just after Christmas they're looking a lot better they probably could be planted out really this floating shelf has been an absolute game changer for me this winter I've loved having the ability to germinate things up here safe away from rodents it's also a bit warmer up here than it is at ground level with drafts coming under the doors so it's just been brilliant and it's not going to be too difficult to take it away and store it in the next month or so when I start planting up in here. Got an early crop of radish there that probably needs thinning out. Definitely needs thinning out. These are my carrots. These were sown in September so they've overwintered in the polytunnel and been really pleased with them so far. Didn't know how well they'd grow in a new bed that had actually got quite a bit of manure in it and it's not overly deep. So some of them aren't brilliant but others I'm quite pleased with. They're only little carrots but certainly tasty so I'm just gonna take a few of those in today. Oh that's a bigger one, look at that one. Look at that, I'm pleased with that one. Very good. It's a nice little harvest. Whilst we talk about harvesting things, I've actually cut all of the leaves from around the outside of this lettuce today. This is an arctic lettuce, but look at that. My first proper headed up lettuce that I've had. Oh, it smells lovely. That'd just go nice on a sandwich, won't it? Now, if I could get the sourdough starter to rise, Ali, Kerry, Nick, it's just not working. Rach totally understands this one. Then I'll be baking my own sourdough bread to go with some nice mature cheese and lettuce. I'll put these on the desk to take in with me. Look at that little horror making himself comfy inside my lettuce. You're not having a lettuce duvet any longer, you're gone. These spring cabbages were overwintered in here and they very quickly bolted, but I've left them because the insects have been enjoying them. They're not going to stay in here long enough to actually run to seed to save the seed, but they're enjoying them. 
in this corner we have the chard that I transplanted to overwinter in here which has been doing very very well going to get a few more harvests off it before it does run to seed well I was just going to sow these purple sprouting broccoli out but I don't know if you can hear it started throwing it down they're not desperate to go out so they'll have to live in here overnight there's absolutely no point in getting soaked just to plant something in the ground that doesn't necessarily need to go in the ground today so I'm going to leave them in here and try again with that one hopefully tomorrow or later on this evening but what I can do now is start to plant up my hanging baskets warmer in here. I don't know what makes me think this but I may have just overbought slightly on the plants for two hanging baskets. I'm going to take a couple of these packs around to the other greenhouse and we'll get them potted up. Then they can sit back in here and grow on in the hanging basket but actually two hanging baskets will probably take up less space than three or four of these trays will. I've got my hanging basket. This one is just a 14 inch basket. I'm going to go ahead and get it filled with compost. This is just clover compost. I'm not going to fill it any more full than that because I want it to be able to hold water and it not run over the top. I have a series of million bells. These are all double ones in various colours. And then I have other trailing plants and some green foliage to go in them. So I'm going to try and fit pretty much all of these in here because I like an absolutely cram-packed full hanging basket. These are all from the local nursery as well really good quality plants which was not a trailing plant in the middle I have a couple of these cabana jumbos a white one the other side look at the pretty flower on that absolutely gorgeous definitely inspired yet again by Kerry when she was showing hers of these and I was so taken by them and I hadn't realized I'd actually already bought some red one here as well stick this Biden in as well bought these Lobelia's teeny tiny plugs they've been in the greenhouse for a very long time already pleased with them right. this is going to be the last thing I'm going to squeeze in a little bit more compost to fill over the tops there you go first one finished I'm really pleased with the look of that we have a bit less threat of frost because it's a bit cold this week I will hang them from hooks from the polytunnel for a few weeks before they go out but yeah they can get bedded in there can't they Oh, I'm really thrilled with that. And there's the second one. All finished. Again, going to leave it in the greenhouse to settle in. Going to give them a water over there. And hopefully in another six weeks they'll be able to go outside. As you might be able to see behind me, I went in the house for a cup of coffee. I've come outside and the sun is now shining. So I'm definitely going to get that purple sprouting broccoli in the ground. Let's get it done before the rain comes back. Or the hail, or the snow, or the frost. Who knows what's going on with our weather lately. So this is going to be my brassica bed this year. There's no manure in here because I know that brassicas don't like manure. It's fresh compost. I don't have ev any evidence of club roots, so hopefully these will be okay. So I'm not going to bother putting any lime in for this year. I will put my big tunnel up later on but for now I'm just going to put this plush over because they're so small. 
it's almost like a bit of a test really I'll keep some and pop them on so they can grow on a little bit more in case I lose these to slugs I just kind of want to see what problems with pests we have out here because I haven't planted any brassicas out here since we've created this new plot so let's see how we get on in my pocket I have my hori hori and I think I have a pair of gloves I do indeed and I've already written up the label for them oh they've not got a bad root system on brassicas do like to be quite deep in the ground so I'm going to plant these pretty deep and give them plenty of support it's one another one this side same again plant it pretty deep one more here kind of in the middle tidy up my footprint Hopefully they'll be happy there. I'll water them in a minute. I'll take these back into the polytunnel because what I've just remembered actually is that my sister gave me some Brussels sprout starts that they've planted. I think hers are Evesham specials. Rings a bell. Might be wrong. They're in this little flimsy in the polytunnel. Might as well get these in at the same time. I've left the hurry around the other side, so I'll start there. I have sown my own Brussels sprouts actually. Mine are called Brody. So we'll be adding some more in at a later date, hopefully. This bed is a little bit wide actually, annoyingly so, but the brassic hoop that I have is three meters by 1.5 meters. So we made this bed to fit that hoop. Just fill the watering can up out of the trough. Give them a water. I know it's raining a lot, but it just settles the soil around the roots as well. Now all I need to do is put this cover over them for now. As I say, this is just a temporary cover. I have some of these pretty standard pegs. It probably won't do a lot, but they make me feel like I've made an effort to fasten it down. So that's the start of the brassica bed. It's not going to take much to fill it up really, is it? I've got some cauliflower to put in here, kaolet, and I need to put some kale somewhere as well. So I'm probably going to have to find another brassica bed. This also has a bit of a make-do protective cover on it at the moment, just in case pigeons or anything try to peck at it. Well, this is my dwarf artichokes. You might remember me planting them before Christmas. And I can't believe they've all come up. I'm really pleased with those. On the other hand, not much success in the bed next to it. This is the asparagus bed. And so far, the only crowns that appear to have taken are the purple ones. There's one here. And then you can see this one just coming here. But none of the green ones are showing anything yet. So my question here would be, how long do you wait before you give up on your crowns? because obviously if I wait too long, then everywhere will be sold out for spring planting crowns anyway. But what do you think? Should I buy some more and give up with them? While I'm still down this bottom end of the plot, I'll show you something else that we've been working on this week, or rather Duncan's been working on. I haven't done a lot of it. Those of you that have been following me for a while will know that I've had huge problems down this bottom end of the plot with it flooding over autumn and winter. 
and I was particularly worried about the fruit trees behind me because they were constantly swimming in water. Well, it was finally dry enough on here earlier in the week for Duncan to bring the mini digger across. He's dug a huge trench that's gone all the way through the hedge up to the back of the greenhouses. He's laid a drain pipe, it's been filled with gravel and then kind of leveled back off. I have raked it over a bit to try and help and I will seed that in the next few weeks and we're hoping that that deals with the problem. If I open the gate and leave the plot, it comes all the way across here and drains into the dew pond. It is running out of the pipe at the moment, so it's certainly doing its job. So hopefully that should be an end to that problem, thankfully. Another thing I want to do is get these spring sown sets out. They are just too big to be in the polytunnel now. The bed that they're going into does need a bit of work. Got my tools. But I will just take the cover off. There you go, I'll just clip these onto the bar so they don't blow away because it's a little bit windy. I've had quite a lot of comments in the past about how lucky I am to not be suffering with weeds. And I think this bed, which has been completely left alone all winter, stands testament to the fact that I do get weeds. I just normally weed quite regularly to try and keep on top of them. This bed had a really thick layer of cardboard put down before I put the compost in. So I did follow the no dig method for weed suppression. As you can see, with limited success. It's a nice onion smell. Again, good roots. Really looking forward to seeing onions hanging to dry. I don't know why I'm quite looking forward to that especially, but I am. Here you go. That's a double row of pink panthers. Put the label in there. And then right here, I'm going to put a row quite close together again. I'm not bothered about them being big onions so many onions to plant. I completely had zero faith in my ability to sow onion seeds as well so I have a lot of ones that are sowed on Boxing Day that need planting as well. So these ones are the white rumba. Oh yeah, that's quite a lot of roots again. Oh look at that and again. Or cover them back up I will just very quickly go ahead and weed this section 
the creeping buttercup. Soon gonna have pumpkins over here, can't wait for that. Next job, gonna sow some swede. This is where I want to sow the swede. I've had these cloches over the top of there for well, a few days now just to warm the soil and I'm going to leave the cloches over them after I've sown them. The variety that I've picked up is called Gowry and they said it's bred for the UK climate, so hopefully they'll be okay. I'm going to try and sow them sparingly, but we all know how well that goes generally for most of us. Sprinkling them in. Just use the hurry to spread it back out. Might just lean over the bed. back over. I have got a label here already written out. I'll peg that back down. Should keep them warm until they germinate and I'll do the same again with another row this side as well. These cloches are fairly inexpensive but oh, I use them all of the time. They were £26 for a full, a full pair, so the two centres and the two end pieces. But you could actually join two long pieces together to get a run going the other way down the bed. And that's why they do sell them individually. I never really understood why they sold them in pieces and you could just buy the ends or the middle bits and now I know why. Another bed nearly filled up. I've got the two rows of swede. I have a row of sweet fennel that I've already sown here. There's some gladiolis that should be coming up around the archway soon and haven't decided what I'm going to put here yet. Whether I put another row of swede later on or maybe some flowers there. just standing out at the back of the polytunnel and these are the carrot beds and the parsnip beds. Really pleased with the germination on the carrots. I have Nance, Purple King, Rainbow Carrots and two rows of Red Sun. Might fit one more little row in on the end. Carrots are definitely one of the favourites of the family so really pleased with the carrot boxes so far. Initially this was just going to be some flower beds down this side but I realised that that was probably a little bit wasted and having the carrot boxes there has been a really good move, I think. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.